Hi, I'm Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics. Today I'll be showing you how to make pinwheels. Of all the questions I get, probably one of the most frequent questions is, how do you make pinwheels? The complaint that I'm hearing from many of our customers is that the points of the pinwheel just aren't coming together in the center. So that's why I wanted to share with you today how I like to make pinwheels. Now, it's very straightforward actually. It's just several steps and as long as you're doing each step very carefully you should come out with really good pinwheels. So let's start with the pinwheels here on this quilt. This is called Black Beauty and I'm so excited to say that we now have that fabric. We reprinted that border fabric and those kits are now available on our website and I'm just again I've always loved this fabric. It was from Maywood Studio. Um, so if you're in love with that quilt behind me we do have that available on the website. But let's talk about the pinwheels that are in this quilt. This is the pinwheel here. It's turned on point because I did an assembly of a diagonal assembly on the quilt, but nonetheless, a pinwheel is a pinwheel. Now, if you look at this particular portion of the pinwheel, this finishes to three inches. The reason that's important is there's a rule of thumb with pinwheels. They're really just made from half square triangles. So you can see that's just a two fabrics put together and that's a section. That's one, that's one, and that's one. So there's four components to our pinwheel. This portion of the pinwheel finishes at three. The rule of thumb is to add seven eighths of an inch so that you would cut each one of these to three and seven eighths inch. Now three and seven eighths inch is a little bit of an uncomfortable measurement. It's a little hard to see on your mat. You can certainly cut the seven eighths, but I like to cut mine to actually a full inch and then I square up my pinwheel at the end. So I do mine just a little bit differently and that's what I'm going to be sharing with you today. So going back to this, three inches, I'm gonna cut four of the black and I'm gonna cut four inches of the pink and I've done that up front. And I have two black, two pink. Step one is to, from corner to corner, I'm going to mark very precisely just from corner to corner. I like using this little ruler rather than my big ruler because in this type of situation it's just so much easier to manage. These are the six and a half inch um, Omni Grip rulers. I love this. This is the friction pen. Okay. Now you only need to mark on one of your, you, I wouldn't need to mark on the black, A, I can't even see it, but because this will be layered right sides to right sides and you'll be sewing on the one side, you only need to mark one of the two fabrics that make up your um, two colors of your pinwheel. So step one, you mark that. First off, you cut them to four inches square in this particular case. You went diagonal to diagonal. The next thing, line them up really well so they're truly stacked on top of each other. Sometimes you might even wanna cut one fabric on top of each other, right sides together, so they're cut out as a group. Then you know they're perfectly nested. So that's another hint that you can do. So let's nest this and then we'll take it to the sewing machine. What we'll do now is actually sew a quarter inch on either side of that drawn line. So that drawn line is really kind of a track that your presser foot can ride right along and you will be sewing a quarter inch on either side of the line. So let's do that now. Get everything all lined up. Now I'll just bring that next one right in. This is called chain stitching. There's no reason to cut your thread at this point. We just keep going. Then I'll just pull this out, pivot around. Again, there's no reason to cut my thread at this point. We just wanna keep going. And we'll come back down. Again, a quarter inch on the other side of that line. Okay. 
Okay. I'll just trim that up. Trim off those threads. Now, now that we've sewn a quarter of an inch on the other side, on both sides of the line, we will cut on the drawn line. So let's do that now. Again, that's where that little ruler comes in so handy. Okay, now pressing. This is an important part of our pinwheel. So let's bring our pressing mat over so you can see very clearly how I like to press this. Of course, you've got a light side and you have a dark side. As a rule of thumb, I always press to the light side. So let's press, I like to finger press open, and then I'll come in with my iron. Okay, let's do the same for the others. Now, I know it's very tempting to want to iron like this. Don't do it, just don't go there <laughs> because it distorts. Um, it distorts your shapes. So it does take a little bit longer to just press straight down. But I have noticed when I do that swishing left and right that I definitely can um, make my steps later on more difficult because I've distorted my half square triangles. So just press straight down. One more. So I have these little flaps. These bug me. <laughs> so I like to trim them off um, right up front. And so I'm gonna do that because it's just more bulk. There's enough bulk as, as it is with a pinwheel because you have eight seams coming together. Having any extra fabric there is not helping you. In fact, it's, it's making it even more difficult. So I like to go in and trim off those little dog ears right up front and just reduce my bulk. You know, quilting, as I've learned, I'm self-taught. I taught myself when my, I was pregnant with my first child here 20 some plus years ago. Um, I've learned it's really, it's just about precision cutting, precision pressing, and then precision sewing. And that really is all there is to it. So if we can be really precise with each of these steps, you too will have really precise pinwheels. It's just a process. So now that we've got the dog ears cleaned off, we can look at how we want that laid out. And you can see it's going to come like this. So I always like to lay out my pinwheels on my uh, table because sometimes I don't get that orientation right. And of course, then I am seam ripping which is, I don't like to unsew. I like to sew, but not so much unsew. So that looks correct to me. Yes, that is correct. So now we've got four quadrants. This side will just come to this side and go directly on top of that. And this to this. Now this is the, the tender spot. This is where it'll all come together. For that reason, I like to begin sewing here and begin sewing here because that's the intersection everyone's looking at with your pinwheel. So rather than starting here and sewing there, I'm going to start here and sewing there and I'm going to sew here and there. So let's take that to the sewing machine. Now because that's our point down there, let's make sure everything's lined up really, really well.
So now that those two sections are sewn together, we'll take it to our mat and now we'll press the seams open. Pressing the seams open reduces the bulk of all of those seams coming together in the center. Okay. All right. Now, I'd like to lay it out one more time and make sure, did I get everything lined up right? <laughs> Have I sewn pinwheels together wrong? How many times? I can't even count. So now we'll do the upper portion to the bottom. And as you can imagine, that intersection right there in the middle is your most important place. As a result, I like to put a little pin right there so that doesn't shift when I begin to sew. And I put a pin on either side of that. See that little intersection right there? Let's just make sure everything is lined up exactly where we want it to be. The rest of the pinwheel can be a little bit off and you don't really notice, but you definitely notice if that centers out and sometimes people will cover it with a button or a little yo-yo or something like that. Um, well, we want to be able to not have to do that unless we want to. Let's take that to the sewing machine and we're going to sew a quarter inch down there and then we will see our finished pinwheel. When you get to the section where you have all of these seams coming together, make sure that those seams are still open on the bottom and on the top and they don't roll over like they can do sometimes when you're sewing. Oh, my machine knows there's a lot of bulk there going on right now. I can definitely feel that. Let's see how we did. Look at that. Look how everything just came together. So again, we will press our seams open. Now remember how I, the rule of thumb was seven eighths of an inch is what, is what you add to make a pinwheel. And I like to add an inch because I like to score up my pinwheel. This section was three inches, this section is three inches. So together that's considered a six inch pinwheel. But remember you have a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. So we would need to square this up to six and a half inches. So that's again where that little, little ruler comes in so, so handy. So let's get that out again. And starting with our center, if this should measure six and a half, this needs to measure three and a quarter and three and a quarter. So I'm going to find three and a quarter on my ruler and lay that right down that seam right there. And then very carefully I'm going to come in and trim off the excess. So again, three and a quarter on the ruler, lay that right down that seam. And we'll just keep turning till we've done all four sides.
a little bit more on that side. Looks like I messed it. So you can see by, by adding the inch, it just allows you that little bit of that fudge factor that you can then go up and square up your um, pinwheel to the exact size you want. There's nothing wrong with doing the seven eighths of an inch, but then you can't, there's nothing to trim. It is what, whatever it looks like finish is what you're going to be using going into the quilt. So that's why I recommend using the one inch so you can square up like that um, and have perfect pinwheels. So I hope you enjoyed this video today. Of course, Shabby Fabrics is always having um, fun DIY projects and quilting tutorials such as this. I hope you'll subscribe to our YouTube channel so you make sure you never miss a video.